Brett Allen here uh, with the Brett Allen Show. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening and being a part of today's conversation. Be sure to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and our podcast to get more great interviews like this. We have a very special guest today. Uh, we're chatting with actor Henry Thomas about Sam and Kate. Uh, and, I mean, just a really iconic career. Uh, thank you for your time today. We appreciate you, and thanks for hanging out. Oh, thanks for having me on, Brad. Yes, well, we're kind of coming full circle here because a few months ago we had uh, Thomas Howell, C. Thomas, on the show. Uh, and uh, you came up in the conversation and we had said, man, we would love to get Henry on the show. And here we are. So this is oh, a good pretty. film. Yeah, you have a fun part and a fun character in this. Um, I'm very curious as an actor and a storyteller uh, with this film in particular and others, what interested you in this and uh, made you decide that you wanted to commit your time to it and, and be a part of such a great story? Well, it's interesting, the story of my involvement in this project, because uh, you mentioned coming full circle. Well, the first film I ever did was a film called Raggedy Man in 1980, 81. And that film starred Sissy Spacek, and was directed by her husband, Jack Fisk. Um, that was my introduction into acting and and that was the start of my career. And Jack uh, was instrumental in getting me the audition for E.T. So anyway, they're like family for me. The producer of this film, uh, Sam and Kate, is one of my oldest friends, Orion Williams, who I've known for years in LA uh, when he was an assistant sleeping on people's couches and <laughs> didn't get anything made. And, you know, um, so here's a film that he produced. Uh, I mean, he's produced many other films before this, but I just think it's neat. Also, uh, Darren Legallo, comes from my hometown. I met with these guys like eight years ago. Wow. And Darren had this script and Orion said, yeah, we're going to try to get this made. And at the time, Darren was like, you know, I want you to play Sam and, uh, you know, we'll get some other people attached. And I was like, great. And then, of course, you know, it went away for a while and almost happened a couple of times. And then Sissy became uh, involved and Dustin became involved and Jake and Skyler. And uh, it took on this whole new life. And they never forgot about me. And they said, hey, come on, we've got this role for you. And it was just a week's worth of work. And it was a lot of fun. And it really, for me, was a very special thing personally because I got to work with Sissy again and wow. I got to work with Skylar, uh, who was like born right around the time E.T. came out. So, um, you know, uh, when I was going to the award shows in the wake of the success of E.T. and I was losing all of the my like <laughs> honorable mention uh, nominations as a kid. Uh, Jack and Sissy presented me with this award that they had constructed themselves and it was called the Schuyler Award. So that was always the best award I've ever been given. And uh, to have a chance to work with her and her mom in the same film, it's really special. Yes. You know, it's interesting on this topic of full circle because it, I think one of the things that I'm fascinated about your world, really just about the industry and why I do the show is because of the stories that people have and yours being the most present in the moment here in the fact that like, you just never know the width and the reach that this industry is industry is going to have. Right. Because I mean, you're working with these people decades ago uh, and then all of a sudden now you're working with their kids or grandkids. It has to just be mind boggling, really, uh, to know the fact that people will 
will remember you in this business. It's it's big, but it's very small, right? I mean, it's not that big. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also very transient, you know. Yeah. So it, it you know things change hands a lot of times, and you know people come in and out of jobs, and yeah, but it is a small world relatively, you know. It's a small, ever changing world, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I run into people all the time in the weirdest places that have some kind of connection to a a person that I've worked with or I've worked with them uh, themselves, you know, like, oh, I was an extra on this film or, yeah, I used to do craft service. And I mean, you stick around long enough, then, you know, you start to see the patterns emerge, right? Yes. Well, I would imagine for yourself, having had such longevity and what I would call success in the business, I mean, to to not just be a part of something and then have that be it, but to be a part of something and then to have a career that continues on as a, a working actor, it has to be rewarding because I imagine, you know, you alluded to the fact about, you know, this massive success of E.T., and and I, I I didn't want to focus on that a lot because I feel like you've probably been on a press tour for this film for the last <laughs> 50 years. Well, not That's 50. What I say. I, I'm 48. I so. so, I mean, I remember when it came out as a kid and I just took my eight year old to see it over the summer at the drive in, um, exposing him to the first time to it. But just back to the topic of having longevity. I mean, it, it has to be satisfying, I would imagine, to know that you've been able to continue to work. Um, even on great projects like this, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it certainly makes you feel validated, I suppose, to a degree. But more importantly, I mean, it's just, you know, the career that has happened is, is basically just been survival, right? <laughs> yeah. For the most part. And I think I... I've, I forget uh, who said it, but, you know, an actor said, you know, I, I, I was struggling for years and then I realized I, I, I had had a career. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a funny thing, but it feels nice to work with good people and people that you know and people that you've worked with a long time ago and that you're still around, you're all still around, you know, makes you feel like a real pro. Yeah. Well, I would say that you are, I mean, I, I would imagine too being kind and being honest with your work as an actor and storyteller probably plays a huge part of that. I'm very curious projects like this um, and others that you've been in as you have matured as an actor and became a part of other things. Is there one thing in particular, or maybe a checklist that you look for uh, that's important to you that you, you would like to see? Um, I mean, obviously there are probably times where you just have to work, but generally speaking, like what are some key things, uh, Henry, that are, are important to you when it comes to being a part of something? Well, for me as an actor, you know, my primary function is just to serve the story. Uh, so I really look at story. Uh, I look at that more than anything else, I think, when I approach uh, a role or I think about approaching a role. And if there are elements of the story that are there, maybe just confused on the page, uh, it really gives you something to do as an actor. Uh, if the piece is incredibly well written, it also gives you something to do as an actor. Uh, but there's always something you can do as an actor to serve the story and to propel it and make it better. So if I read something and it sucks me in and, uh, you know, it, 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 it draws me into that world enough 
that I think, hmm, I could create something out of this, then that's all I need, really. Um, it's not important to me what the story is about so much, you know? It's about how the story is constructed. Yeah. I love that. And and speaking of reading, I see behind you there are a lot of books there. Uh oh, yeah. You have a massive bookshelf. So I'm I'm guessing uh, that's not a Zoom screen background like I, I have here. No, I can touch you it. And, yeah, you could it's real. real yeah. Um you enjoy reading, assumably then a lot, because I see some older books there too. Yeah, I mean I have a lot of books. I, I haven't read every one of my books, but okay. <laughs> But I have, uh, but I do have a, uh, uh, I am an avid reader or have been. And uh, I would imagine that helps you too, as an actor to kind of cleanse the palate, perhaps maybe between projects or things that you're creating on your own. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, also just as an actor, you, you have these vast amounts of, of leisure time that are kind of you know, in chunks, sometimes on a job and off the job. So it helps to kind of occupy yourself uh, with things. And a lot of these books are are, are, are a product of that, <laughs> that time. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. Well, that's very cool. Well, one last question here or two, when you're not working on great projects like Sam and Kate, um, I know you are involved in other aspects of the industry as well. Uh, what are some of the other things that you like to do uh, relatably to this or perhaps externally that keep the creative juices flowing, that keep you motivated and keep you going out to say the auditions or looking at scripts in this whole cr encompassing creative space? Well, I write uh, yes. a lot. I. I published a book in, in 2019 called the window in the mirror. And it's the first book of a, of a fantasy series. Uh, so, you know, I did world building and created this, uh, this place uh, where my story is set. And I have a few books that I'm planning uh, to release uh, one of which I'm working on now. So I spend a lot of time, uh, working on that. And I also play music. Uh, I play guitar and that helps me relax. And I used to kind of do it semi-professionally. So I, I do have an album that I'm going to release, uh, imminently release, but I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. And so I have a lot of irons in the fire in terms of creative things, but really I think as an actor, most of what you do to kind of keep yourself in shape as it were is watching other actors, but also interacting with people. And, and I do a fair amount of that which i really enjoy you know because i have just the kind of annoying level of fame where you're not really, <laughs> That's funny. You're not you're not really rich or like super famous but you can go anywhere you know and yeah well you know people like look at you funny because they recognize <laughs> you from somewhere but they can't quite put their finger on it and um or they do but it's no big deal you know so yeah, I really, I really kind of enjoy that, um, and that keeps me humanity keeps me inspired. <laughs> That's great. Well, I mean, I imagine you, if they're, depending on the social demographic or age demographic, can I? I'm just curious. Can when you're out in public, it, like I'm 48 again, so you would be in that realm of people I would definitely recognize if I saw you. Yeah, obviously at a con, it would be different because you have posters and signs up and, right. you know, people obviously connect you with that. But 
do, can you spot a fan quickly when they see you and make <laughs> make eye contact out in the yeah. public and go, oh, this guy's definitely an ET fan or a whatever fan? <laughs> I would imagine it probably comes quite fast for you. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people, you know, I think, I think because I've I've been in so many things over the years, or they've just seen me in things over the years. Um, they feel really familiar with me. So yeah. a lot of people will just like look at me and point like, <laughs> and like, like, am I right? Am I right? That's funny. And then I'll give them the, and they'll go. Yeah. I love it. I, I think they're more, I think they're more excited about being right about seeing me than actually seeing me. I don't know. If I saw you, I would be excited. I mean, I've been looking forward to talking to you since we knew this was happening. I love the film, Sam and Kate, and of course, um, everything else that you've done. Uh, I mean, I have followed you, obviously, post ET into all the music and the books. Um, and uh, this is a great film, and you've had a great career. And uh, I really appreciate your time uh, chatting with us. This has been up oh, and we have a visitor. <laughs> I have a guest here. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, yeah. thank you, my friend, for your time. It's It's been a true pleasure chatting with you. Thanks very much. Thanks for uh, having me on your show. I appreciate it. Absolutely.